Hey guys, it's Austin here with Out Jeeping. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to install an over the axle track bar system in your Jeep solid axle vehicle. Now today, I'm going to be installing the Trail Logic Industries over the axle track bar system. So let's go take a look. Alright, so once again, our, the track bar system we're going to be installing today is by Trail Logic Industries. And what's all included in this is obviously our track bar, which is an inch and a half by quarter inch DOM tubing. They come with heim joints on either end, which are heat treated chromoly, and one of them is reverse thread, another one's normal thread, so it's going to be easy for us to get the alignment right. And they also have misalignment spacers, which are hard chrome plated with PTFE. We also have our axle side bracket over here, which needs to be welded onto the axle. And this is made of nice quarter inch construction. And we also have a grade eight hardware for obviously our track bar. They also do come with a Rubicon Express track bar bracket that attaches to the frame side, but I opted out of that because I actually already had that installed onto my Jeep. And I basically just had to email them real quick and tell them that I didn't want that and they responded really fast. So I recommend this company for sure because they have great customer service and the shipping was extremely fast too. I think I ordered this on Monday afternoon and it came here on Wednesday. Now this track bar system also does work with the Arctic track bar bracket that goes on the frame and with their truss system. So if you already had that, you can use this track bar system and it will fit perfectly. All right, so the process I'm gonna do for installing this system is basically lift up the front end of the vehicle and pull the tires off and drop the axle down lower. That way we can get in there and make sure that we get that bracket on and weld it on nicely. I'm gonna go and remove my steering system just for uh, filming purposes and so I can get in there a little bit better with the welder. But you probably don't have to do that. If you're on a lift, um, obviously you can just lift this up. You might not have to remove any of this at all, but I'm gonna do it today. So let's get started. So one thing you may notice with the factory track bar system that's also happening on mine is basically the suspension is limiting as in down travel over here because the track bar actually hits this factory bracket right here and it won't allow the suspension to go down any further. So with having this over the axle track bar system with the Himes, it's not going to bind at any point and it'll go down as far as it can pretty much go until uh, something else limits out like your shocks. So just for filming purposes, I am going to be removing the uh, drag link and tie rod over here on the passenger side, and then I'm just going to move them out of the way. It shouldn't affect my alignment at all if I keep the uh, heim joints in the same exact position as they were when I take them off. So I'm going to do that real quick. Then we'll also remove our old track bar, and then we'll start to fit up the new one into place. All right, so now with that steering out of the way, I'm gonna go and remove our old track bar. And this is actually gonna be a three quarter inch bolt with this Rubicon Express track bar. And if you have a factory one, it's just gonna be a 15 millimeter. And you don't have to worry about the backside because there's actually a flag nut over there. So it's gonna catch and it shouldn't spin from the backside. All right, so that's what the flag nut looks like. And then you can remove the track bar from the frame side of the vehicle. And this bolt is also going to be a three quarter. All right, so I went and got this mocked up real quick. And basically with the track bar, the misalignment spacers, the bigger ones go on the 
frame side track bar bracket and the smaller ones go over here on the axle side. So I just got the setup right now and I have the axle bracket right here and I'm just going to eyeball this and see where exactly our bracket is going to be welded onto. And I have the axle um, centered the best I can. It is towards the driver's side a little bit and this is um, a lot of thread engagement on the track bar. So I still do have threads to play with because it still needs to go that way and this will extend out. So basically what I'm going to do to get this lined up the best I can um, I'm going to take a sharpie and just mark it right here and it's basically really close to where the factory bracket is right over here maybe like a quarter inch gap in between but I want to leave that little bit of gap instead of going all the way over that way I can still get my uh, welder in there and weld that other side in nice and firmly because I want this to be nice and strong. Now for getting it straight up and down obviously you can see this has a uh, wide range of movement on where you can put it so it doesn't necessarily need to be exact dead on to the degree because we do have heim joints and they allow us to be able to move this around a lot but what i'm going to be doing to try and get this straight up and down the best i can is i'm actually going to use my magnetic angle finder and i'm going to match the angle of this bracket from the one that's already on the frame that way they should be nice and parallel all right so i got my angle finder right here and I'm going to set this up on this bracket and zero it out. Then I'm going to bring this down over here. All right, so right there is pretty parallel. I'm just going to take my Sharpie and mark roughly where it's going to go. I'm going to have to do this again when I weld this up, but right now I'm going to go and make sure our axle is nice and clean. That way we can put some nice welds on there. So I'm going to take a flap disc on a grinder and grind away all this paint on the axle tube. That way we should have a nice clean weld. I'm also going to go and bevel the edges of this track bar bracket. That way I get some good penetration when I go to weld this. Alright, so I got the surface all prepped and before I tack this into place, I'm actually going to go and disconnect the battery. That way when we're welding, nothing electronically on the vehicle will get messed up. So all I'm going to be doing is just removing the negative terminal. All right, so there's real no way to clamp this into place to hold it to weld it. So what I'm going to be doing is just taking the angle finder and getting it as close as I can, hold this with one hand, and then tack it into place. And once again, it doesn't have to be dead on perfect because these high joints do have a lot of play in them. All right, so I went and got our bracket all tacked on. And now I'm just going to go and double check our angle. And it looks like we're dead on. So that's awesome. So that means I'm going to go and fully weld this in. I'm going to take my time when welding this. I don't want to put too much heat on it because I don't want to warp the axle or do something stupid like that. So I'm just going to do a little spot at a time and then work my way around and then hopefully be able to weld this on inside and out. It's going to be a little bit tight in here, but I'm hopefully going to be able to get in there with my uh, MIG gun. If not, the outside should be pretty good. I might do two passes since I did bevel the edges. So, let's get at it. Alright, so I got everything all welded in. And I did use a flux core welder and I just went over it a second time on the outside but it actually did penetrate pretty good since I did bevel the edges. It was a little hard getting on this top side on the inside but I did manage to get it on the bottom side and the side over here. Now the last thing we got to do is basically paint this all up and then we can go and install everything back on. All right, so one thing we're gonna do before we install this track bar is lubricate these threads right here. I like to use some anti-seize and it really helps, um, especially if you live in a rust belt like me, so that way the threads don't rust up and if you have to adjust this again, it should be a breeze. So I'm gonna start off by putting these heim joints all the way in, maxed out, and then we'll hook up this to the axle and then we'll adjust accordingly. And this way it allows us to have the even amount of thread coverage on either heim joint. That way um, we shouldn't be having too much on one and too little on the other. Slide that up into the frame side. 
and stick our longer bolt washer right on through. And then a washer and our lock nut on the back side. Same thing over here. Now if we have to adjust it, all you got to do is twist the uh, bar one way or the other. And it should be able to line up. And then washer and nut on the back side. So before I put everything back together, I'm going to go and tighten the two three quarter inch bolts on either end of the track bar. And we'll do the alignment after when the wheels are on the ground. All right, with those two tightened down, I'm gonna go and put my steering back on, and depending on what type of steering you have set up on your vehicle, it's gonna be different. I have crossover steering, so it's a lot different than it was from factory. So I'm not gonna really show that, but I'm gonna put everything back together, then we'll get it back on all fours, and then we'll do the alignment. Alright, so with the Jeep back down on all fours, I'm going to go and do the alignment to get the axle centered under the front of the vehicle. And the best way I like to do it is just simply with the tape measure. And I like to go against the uh, bump stop over here because it's pretty much the same on the other side of the vehicle. And then when I'm measuring over here, you could use a uh, tread or what I like to use is actually a level. And you want to put this level on the sidewall and get it right where it's level at. And we're about 17 and a quarter, so it's sticking about a quarter of an inch out on the driver's side because I already measured that. So now I'm going to go and adjust our track bar, and then we should be able to get this thing centered. All right, so once again, all we got to do to adjust this is simply turn it. It's pretty simple. So right here is actually where I'm going to have it. And then once you find out what place you want it, all you got to do is tighten down these collars on the end, and that should lock into place. <coughs> So some of you have, may have already noticed, I actually did weld the axle mount in the wrong position. And I've installed similar kits like this before and they actually go you know, right next to the old bracket. And apparently this kit is not how it's supposed to be. You're actually supposed to cut off the existing track bar bracket that's already over here. And this will free up about an inch of space. And you want it to look basically like how it is on the driver's side. Cut all of these um, angles out and just leave the spring perch as it is. That way you should be able to take this axle bracket and have it come over about another inch. That way your track bar should be able to line up because the problem I noticed when I installed this because the track bar was too long and I wasn't able to align my axle centered underneath the vehicle. Now a thing I did do to fix this was actually to cut off a half an inch of the actual track bar on either end and that gives me about a solid inch or so shorter on the track bar. That way I could still adjust it properly to have my axle centered. And if you're wondering, there's still plenty of thread engagement inside the track bar, probably over two inches on either end. So we're pretty good on that. It's not gonna make it any weaker. It's just gonna be a little bit shorter because I put the axle bracket to the right a little bit. So all in all, it still works the way I have it set up with it cut a little bit shorter. If you're gonna install this, you're probably gonna to wanna to cut off the old bracket. Trail Logic Industries actually does have online instructions, which I actually didn't know existed before I started um, installing this, but they do have that to help you make sure that you, you get the axle bracket in the correct position. It's basically gonna be the same procedure as I had done for this, but it's gonna be slid over an inch or so that way you won't have any issues with having too long of a track bar. All right guys, that's gonna be a wrap for today's video. Unfortunately, we all make mistakes sometimes and you guys got to see along the way. I will post in the description below a link to the over the axle track bar system by Trail Logic Industries and for their online instructions. Overall, I'm very happy with the quality of these parts and the quality of the ride it's given me. It almost completely got rid of my bumps here, so I'm very happy about that. If you guys found this video helpful, make sure to like and subscribe to the OutJP YouTube channel and it'll help keep these videos coming. If you have any questions or comments, post them below and I'll see you guys in the next video.